Okay, Joe from Smarter Digital here. I'm going to talk to you about settings on your camera. I guess I meet a lot of people who are starting off in photography and just to get off the green box is quite a challenge because even though everybody says there's only three things, the ISO, the shutter, the aperture, when do you actually use those settings for the type of photography you want to actually do? So I get a lot of people who say, oh, they only shoot in manual because they have total creative control. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that because total creative control isn't necessarily about the settings in your camera, but actually how you visually capture what you actually want to take a photo of, the composition, where the light's landing on your subject, etc. So I want to take that equation out of this particular conversation and just concentrate on the three things of the aperture, the shutter and the ISO. So on your cameras, you generally have program, shutter, aperture and manual. So in program mode, the camera actually looks at trying to adjust the aperture and the shutter to the correct setting, depending on whether you're shooting in low light or in bright light. So in good lighting, you'll see that generally cameras will try and shoot between f8 and f11 because that's a bit of a sweet spot when it comes to sharpnesses in lens. And then when it drops into a much lower light situation, the aperture then opens up to its maximum aperture to let in as much light. At the same time, the shutter is actually uh, applying the right shutter speed based on the light that's coming in through the lens. But that also is based on the ISO setting. So the ISO is the sensitivity of the camera. The lower the ISO setting, the finer the detail you're actually, your camera actually captures. As you turn up the sensitivity of the camera to be able to see light in a darker situation, it's almost in essence like turning up a stereo system. When you turn up the music really, really loud, you get a distortion at those louder situations. And so you can actually get a, a distortion in the picture. We call this noise. Not unlike how film used to be, we used to use a higher ISO or a higher ASA, the films were grainier. So in essence, it's much the same way. But in today's technology, higher ISOs like 3200 and 6400 are amazing in cameras, especially uh, full frame cameras, where they can actually produce a much lower noise due to the actual sensor size. But that's another conversation. So we have the camera that allows us to shoot in program, which based on the ISO gives us what aperture and shutter combination is required. I don't mind using the auto ISO settings because that allows me to free up to have to make a constant decision in regards to the ISO, especially if I'm trying to shoot in a very quick environment. I don't really have the time to change between 100 ISO and 400 ISO if I'm chasing somebody from a church, an indoor church environment to the outdoor situation. Auto ISO, what's really great about it is that I can cap it. So then that way the ISO doesn't go higher than the value that I want it to go to. If I'm shooting sports, I'd rather choose the actual shutter speed. And so the aperture is chosen by the camera while I choose whatever shutter speed I want. Once again, auto ISO is very valuable in here. If I need to turn up the shutter speed higher, then the ISO will also go up higher. I then shoot in aperture. If I want to be working with depth of field, well then what I can do from there is just work with the aperture of the lens itself. Once again, the camera will choose the shutter speed. They are semi-automatic settings, so you can be focusing on one part of your creativity and letting the camera choose the other part of the creativity. So what's the big deal about manual? Well, I have to choose the aperture and I have to choose the shutter. I also have to choose the ISO, so I have total control of the camera. If I have situations where I have time for total control, then manual is a way that you could also use the camera where you can decide what shutter speed and what aperture you're using and what ISO, but you are then relying on the light meter on the camera itself to tell you if your exposure is either going to be over or underexposed or more brighter or darker in your picture. So in aperture mode or shutter mode or program, if I want to make the picture brighter or darker, over or underexpose it, I can do that in those settings. I don't have to just do that in manual. 
and that's using the exposure compensation button. So I hope that's helped you in regards to those four settings on the top of your camera. When do you need to use those settings? Do you always have to use manual? Don't feel like you need to be using manual all the time. Work on your creativity. That's the mechanical side. The other side of your creativity is the way you capture the light and how you see the image. I'm Joe from Smarter Digital. I hope that's really helped. Catch you for now.